大家好。谢谢。大家好，哎，都很舒服啊 ，OK 啊。Sorry, I was too busy, so I did not stay、uh, long. I came and then I had to leave. I come back again, had to leave again. I cannot always report to you everything in my life. Take too long, many books, okay. But I have not been lazy or neglecting you. I wish I could have stayed all that time. I went from Sunday. I want to stay until Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, but I could not. Things are not always the way we want it, so please don't mind. Forgive me. There are so many Westerners and foreigners came. A four hundred something, yeah. But、uh, I wanted to spend more time with them. Truly, I did. I just cannot, and the reasons I cannot tell you either. Be sure. I feel very sorry. Be sure that I did not want that. If I could have come, I would have. If I could have stayed, I would have. Okay, be sure to know that. Just sometimes、uh, things are not always working out the way we want it. It's just karma, also, karma that it happened that way. If anybody treat me bad or did something bad to me, it's only karma, the world karma. So I don't really blame anyone or feeling too disturbed of any kind. It's just everything. It's just karma, and we just have to live with that. We just have to. There's no other way. <laughs> we can't escape right now. We are still in prison, huh? I mean, the body is still in prison. Our soul could be free, just our body is not yet.、Hmm? And why we are having this body? We will have to bear all kind of subsequent elements or conditions or situations that we sometimes did not expect, and even if we expect, we cannot avoid. We can only do more meditation, pray for the situation to go by fast, <laughs> as fast as possible. Uh, for you, it's easy. Pray to Master, and she takes care of everything. <laughs> master cannot pray. I can only pray for you, for the world. I cannot pray for myself. I can also pray for my dogs. Sometimes, because my dogs worry so much, they all worry about me a lot. And sometimes they cannot keep quiet. They come crying in the middle of the night, like.、Uh, Two nights ago, one of my dog come crying. They sleep with me, you know. It's just the next room. I need inside to meditate. I do sit outside with them for some times, and then sometimes I go inside another room. Normally, I don't have these rooms. They built it for me, but I never use it for decades or something because I did not like. I did not need such a big house. But the dogs came. Now I have to leave there so that they can be with me when I'm working and when I'm sleeping. They're happier that way, of course, huh? I'm like their pack leader, huh? They like to be around. And two nights ago, I was sitting、uh, meditating or something, and she came crying to me. One of the dog, the one who always warned me of something. I told you one of the dog always warned me of something. Other dogs、uh, gave up. Ah,、uh, sometimes they still do, but this one constantly. She never afraid. <laughs> they have no other way to do. So sometimes they pee in the house, pee in the middle of the house, so that I have to step on it, and I know what she wants to tell me something. 
because uh, sometimes they talk, but I don't listen. I have other things to listen. I, I went up and I went down. <laughs> so I did not hear what she's saying. She has to do that way, that, uh, finally. Then I go and ask her, what is it? And then she told me this, that, warning me of some foreboding danger or trouble that I can minimize or try to avoid. Yes. Actually, you cannot always avoid, but if you can, you do. I still need to keep this instrument going well. Otherwise, I think to go up is the best situation, best solution. You don't have to deal with anything anymore except the good one. <laughs> like Yogananda, Master, he went up to only astral level to teach there, and he's happy already because he said that the beings over there is easier to teach. They are more peaceful, more intelligent, more cooperating. They have different nature. They don't have to deal with this physical problem like what we do here. Eh? <laughs> we need to work this uh, weekend, working, working. <laughs> and then we need to work to earn money, yeah? and then have to pay for house or car, for insurance, for whatever, sickness, hospital, and then we have to pay tax, and then astral people don't need to do that. They think, and they get what they want. But they want almost not much, except those uh, lower level astral, then they wanted things. The astral people, they have better life than we have, but the lower astral level are the hell level of the astral plan of existence, they do have desires, almost like we do here. And sometimes they fight with the higher heaven or higher astral just to get something more. And for them it's easier than for us, because we only have physical instruments. But nevertheless, nowadays we have many super new inventions, which is very, very convenient for our life. Still, these are nothing. <laughs> these are still like first-class garbage compared to <laughs> what we have in heaven. But we are getting there. Remember a long time ago when I first came out, you know, with my bald head, <laughs> exotic bald head and <laughs> exotic monk rope? I have told you, I mean, I don't mean you, maybe the older generation. I've told you that in heaven, in some, some part of heaven, they use light to heal. Okay? Remember? They don't use medicine or cut <laughs> body to heal like we do here. Remember that? If some of you remember? Yeah. Yes, or if you have uh, research into my older lecture. And now we do it here. We use laser, no? To heal the wound and to heal some cancer inside even heal some disease, and they even use a laser in cosmetic to make you look more beautiful. I just buy laser, not, not cutting, and then use laser to heal. Yeah, all kind of awesome things. A couple of years now, they have laser to get rid of some impurity of your face or something like that, make you look bright and beautiful. So actually, we are catching up. The more vegan people, the more benevolent our planet atmosphere, the more comfortable our physical life will be. And the more comfortable physical life, the more we can have a relaxation, peaceful heart to practice meditation. If we are wise, some people, the more high-tech instrument they have, the more they just enjoy a material comfort, and they forgot. But we are getting better. The whole human race is getting better. I feel that way. Don't you? Yes. So we have more vegetarian people now. I just see in the news, 32% people don't eat animal anymore, and 22% is getting rid of meat, and other is getting... <laughs> Getting in there. I'm very happy. It's just too slow for me, but 
better than nothing. That means billions of animals' lives have been saved, and a lot of carbon dioxide and methane gas has been minimized. That's better already. And I hope your children generation will inherit a better planet than we are having now. We all try to be diligent, and that will be done. I'm reading you something that I have written here in, during my three weeks retreat. It's so nice to be alone <laughs> for three weeks, absolutely alone. No dogs, no boyfriend, no girlfriend, <laughs> no wife, no kids, <laughs> just me and myself and the trees and the stream and the sound of the stream water 24-7. Oh, I love that kind of life. And the food delivered to my door. <laughs> well, I, I don't look, see who is who. They deliver far away. I'm inside. And then I go out, get when I feel I need some. But I eat very little during retreat. You can see I'm, my face is a little bit going down, yeah? Before, I used to be a little bit fat. <laughs> Not really fat, just... More round everywhere, and now kind of, mm, 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 mm. recognize me. Mm. <laughs> I like it both way. I don't care. If you know many things that I know, you would immediately just want to leave the world, become monks, and none like this. And I sometimes really wish that I could take all of you to a mountain, remote mountain somewhere, or even Siberia where nobody wants to see us. There we can buy thousands of hectares for maybe 50,000 US dollars. Yeah. I'll go to uh, a Gobi Desert where nobody wants it to be, and just stay there. Yeah, became breatharian or something, and just continue to stay there to be together with God and with each other, like-minded people. Here in the world is good and comfortable, it's just that it makes us so complicated, so, so greedy, so desirous of things, that we forgot what our purpose in life is. We forgot to be more noble, more gentle, and kinder to others, very difficult, because the karma and the influence of others' karma or some mm, not benevolent people's projections of their bad energy to harm you or because jealousy or because of some material gain and competition and make you feel very uncomfortable then you sometimes don't know why suddenly you feel very agitated, very zealous. You have no idea where this attitude came from, and you could not even control. It's just burning inside, outside, make you feel very, very bad. Because we are together with the whole race of human. If we are alone somewhere, we feel better truly like that, uh, except for the Master. Master is never alone. Karma can catch her anywhere, <laughs> no escape. For example, I did not meditate or went on retreat for myself, just for others, yeah? Therefore, you cannot escape the karma and the bad energy that comes from nowhere and everywhere. This is number three, but this is number one. <laughs> because after this I say, see X. X is this one. <laughs> okay then, remind me to see X, okay? Because <laughs> when I wrote, I have to write very fast. Okay. I originally want to read you the story, but the story won't go away. I read this first, okay? Because maybe this will go away, who knows? When I go out. <laughs> Thank you, but why is that? <laughs> why so suddenly and spontaneously, why? Huh? You like this, right? 
Yeah, yeah, you never know. My dogs sometimes they like to <laughs> taste it, play with it. They did. Sometimes with your with my other dog woman, they, they eat them for fun. Yeah. What for? Master have to read them day and night. We just get rid of them. <laughs> we have the power. <laughs> we can help her in this way. Here, you, <laughs> ten pieces, you, twenty, you, thirty. Let's all do it. We are seven. Power. Together, we're strong. <laughs> we get rid of all this trouble that make Master frown and pacing up and down and don't sleep, don't eat, don't drink. These things must be bad stuff. <laughs> Whatever paper, they are bad. Because every time Master reads some paper, she changed. She don't look so happy. <laughs> we take them off. <laughs> and or maybe sometime I drive my golf car and they just fly away into the pond or to the water. So I read this first. And this one is not easy to fly away. Yeah? And I mostly put them in my bag so dogs don't get it. Or on the table. And they can. They can some them. They go up, get their paw, and scratch them down. It's all over. One time I told you, good love saved the day. He gathered them somehow and put it all under his stomach and lay on it. <laughs> uh, when I came back, wow, I thank him no end. Because many corner already, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, change shape. <laughs> yeah, they make flower out of my documents and my uh, stuff. Yeah. If I'm at home, not too bad. But if I'm abroad and I brought these documents with me, and if they eaten, then very difficult for me to get them back. I don't know who sent it, and I don't have people around me to help me to retrace them or reprint them. Okay, now I'm reading the one that you're clapping at. <laughs> but I want to know why you clap? For sharing. Oh, that was spontaneous. I got all together. <laughs> if I tell you to do stuff and you are together like that with me, I'd be very, very happy. You remember the story I told you about Kabir? He offered his wife to the neighbor grocery store owner so that he may have some food for his true seeker at home. Yeah, he didn't have a lot of money. He worked for his upkeep by laboring. He doesn't earn a lot of money. So then he didn't even have money to buy enough food for the influx at that time of the true seeker who flocked to him for wisdom and maybe initiation. So his wife went neighboring to borrow some flour until they have enough money to repay, but the owner wanted something else. If she stay with him for a night, then she can have anything she wants for that day. But she doesn't stay, of course. She went home and told her husband. So her husband, Kabir, Saint Kabir, who has been chased, abstinent from physical intercourse with his wife all this time, and who advocates abstinence, brought his wife, carry her by himself to the grocery store owner and say, here she is. You can have the pleasure. Let me have the food. Some of you ask me, why would the saint do that? Isn't that kind of contradictory to us, what he preached? Anybody? Tell me, all these years that you have been listening to me, I want to listen to you now. Who can tell me? Uh, well, I can have that fancy glass for you. Mm. <laughs> Look good. No, oh, the fan. Anyone? Why did Kabir do that? Good, very good. What do I do? I have only this fan look uh, good or not? Which one? <laughs> okay, never mind, give it to you both. And I can have other one next time. There, two. Namalenka. Very good. Very good. Very good. 
So, uh, I wrote on my note, okay? Because I know some of you ask this kind of question. I wrote here. Remember to tell you explanation, because I wrote so different notes here, I might forget. Explanation, extra. Kabir offered his wife to his neighbor in exchange for some food to feed his spiritual seeker's guests. Does it make him immoral? Though he himself abstained from sex. How do we know that? Because in his teaching it's written so. Somebody asked him, why did he marry before? And of course had uh, intercourse with his wife all that time until he stopped. So he said, because I wasn't enlightened. So that meaning he doesn't do anymore. They became their friends, okay? Many saints are like that. They only have intercourse for the sake of having children. That's why I told you already. So no master does things actually for the sake of themselves but for others, unconditionally, with love. So it is like a sacrifice, even though it doesn't look like that. Not as we use sensual pleasure to just satisfy ourselves in a selfish way, or indulgent way, or ignorant way. That's the big difference between enlightened beings and the ignorant rest. <laughs> But not all masters would do this kind of sacrifice. Not all do that. Not all are willing to do that. There was one, uh, I remember one master, uh, maybe in Tibet or somewhere. One time, one of the daughter of the patron brought food to him and he wanted to have a physical intercourse with her and then she was crying and running back home and tell her mother, her mother brought the daughter back and said, I'm sorry, my daughter was so ignorant. Please, she's yours, okay? Don't worry, I told her already. If you need it for some reason, please, she's yours. And the master refused, said, no, it's too late now. I don't need her anymore because I just saw one of my friend was going to be reborn into some of the... Uh, bad stage of existence, uh, a bad animal's form. So I just wanted to help him to be born as human, and then I can continue to help him. But she ran away and uh, it's too late, he's gone already, he's gone into an animal incarnation already, so no need now, but thank you. Not every master do this, eh? not all master do this, very rarely, very rarely. Very rarely the Master gave it all. Maybe the Master did not know. Also, maybe the Master know but did not want. Many Masters don't even want to teach students, or teach very few students, selected few, after observing for a long, long time, that they come and work for Him, and do some labor to earn merit, and then the Master observed to see which one are more potential for the real thing, for the real initiation. So you can see the example of the master of Hui Nang Ha. Even though Hong Ren, the fifth master of Zen, after Bodhidharma, as many people came to him, the rich, the famous, the powerful, the normal, the common, and the monks, they came to be monks with him also. But he did not really teach them a lot. <laughs> Maybe just to recite Buddha's name, about to the statues, uh, reciting uh, morning and evening liturgy, the service, morning evening service, for the ghosts and for all beings to pray for all people. So when he have a test, exam, to see who is worthy to be his successor, the best of his so-called monk disciple wrote some, you know, verses. It's like uh, I could even write it myself. Very common, very classic, very safe. 
very safe, <laughs> safe for standards. Until Hui Neng came, and then he wrote something else. He did not know how to write, how to read Chinese, because he came from Vietnam at that time. But he asked someone else to help him to write. And that is superior to anything that all disciples can ever imagine or can come up with. It's not what he wrote. It is truly he realized that. Because he is super enlightened already. He was enlightened already before he came to this master. But then this master, of course, gave him the official transmission of the Dharma, and he became complete enlightened then. Therefore, you can see what he wrote. I'm not trying to explain the Diamond Sutra here, so we skip that. <laughs> I just want to tell you that his writing mirrored what he realized inside. That's why Master Hongren gave him his chaza, the clothes, and the begging bowl that has been left since a Bodhidharma for the successor. It's just a symbolic of successorship. It don't cost anything much. It's just a normal monk's rope, okay? And a normal monk begging bowl is not made of gold or diamond or anything that is so precious that somebody even chased Hui Nang afterward trying to kill him to get these things. Many people want to kill him or to harm him for these monk's rope and for the begging bowl, not because they are valuable, it's just they are a symbol of a mastership, of the succeeded mastership. And they hated it when a Vietnamese just came not long ago <laughs> and then left with the most treasure of China at that time. Even not many masters want to give disciple initiation. Milarupa, he has to work for a long, long, long time, yeah, and suffer a lot of beating, scolding. And then even he sneak into to another area to find the chief initiated disciple, just like wanting messenger nowadays, to get the initiation. It doesn't work. He has no experience, nothing. No light, no sound. Because the original master, Mahabha, did not allow it. It's not the, the chief disciple that gave initiation. It is the master who gave. Even the master is not there. Just like sometimes you get initiation here, I'm not there. But you still have experience. Meaning, in the old time, not many masters willing to take in a lot of disciples. Maybe followers, okay, you can come and go, clean the temple, to earn merit, you know, repair the, the Buddha's altar, you know, a cooking for the assembly, all that kind of thing. But not the disciple. Because to give initiation means you have to shoulder that person's karma for life after lives after lives after lives, aeon after aeons, cow paths after cow paths. One person, karma alone, can cover up the whole sky. Buddha said that. Not to talk about his families, his friends, his loved ones, wives, and five, six, seven, eight, nine generation, backward, forward. So not every master willing to suffer. Or not many master having enough power to cover all that. Therefore, not to talk about any other thing that is extraordinary, like offering his physical body or his spiritual energy through physical contact. I will tell you why later. The extra, <laughs> okay? Remind me. If any master sacrifice at all, then through the body suffering, like for example, Jesus, bless his soul, or Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Or Buddha, even, he has to suffer. But uh, not much is written, because Buddha is men. <laughs> men, they don't talk a lot about their suffering. 
even if they almost cannot walk or race, no problem, I'm okay. <laughs> yeah? Macho, you know? And they're just not used to it. They've just been taught to bear it all, to, to keep it to themselves, which is good. I don't do this stuff. <laughs> I don't do this macho stuff. <laughs> uh, mostly I do, it's just, if I can, I air it out, yeah? So some of you know, so that you don't illusionize about being a master, how glory and how beautiful and how easy, only come out on Sunday wearing beautiful glass and <laughs> talk beautiful things and have a lot of bodyguards around Sunday. <laughs> Yeah, it's like that. So if the master suffer, mostly just physical pain, very rarely a master suffer. Like the story I just told you about the Lama who wanted to have physical intercourse with that daughter of the good family. The thing is, if you suffer physically, for example, like Jesus, everybody will worship you, cry for you, pray for you, and they still worship you for aeons to come, because it's a real sacrifice, obvious and gruesome. Even then it's very terrible already to be nailed on the cross and suffer humiliation and pain and suffering even before the cross. So many masters have been tortured, poisoned, maimed, killed, flay alive, burn alive, etc. This we all are familiar with. But to suffer through physical, we call, uh, physical intercourse is a, another thing. It's really ultimate. So you hardly hear any master do that, except the one I told you, that mentioned very little anyway. Many monks wouldn't like to hear that, wouldn't accept that. And Kabir, <laughs> the second one that we heard of. All the master they keep squeaky, pure, around themselves. Because it does make trouble if you're being too near to other humans, even not opposite sex. The same sex could also transmit to you this kind of sexual desire. Not that he deliberately do that, except some men who look like men but are not truly men. They prefer the same uh, gender. So some of the monks I heard of, they never let people go nearer than five uh, meters around them, especially women, just to avoid the energy from their magnetic field to meet. and to cause him trouble. He wants to keep purity. And also I told you that tantric method, hardly anyone succeeds because it's too powerful. Actually in heaven they don't call this sexual power, they call it peace power. But rarely anyone can use this peace power to manipulate it for the world's benefit. You surprised, huh? You're surprised, this kind of energy, heaven call it peace power. Are you surprised? Yes. Have you heard that before? No. Me neither. <laughs> I only knew it as I practice along, okay, and learn things as I go up, as per necessity, as per needed situation, so that I can bring this knowledge to you also. Huh? And once and for all, the humans can know this type of power, which is called peace power, actually. If you don't abuse it, you will have peace. And you can make peace and you can spread peace also to the world. There are many ways to make peace, not just one way, huh? But a master can only give so much spiritual power to bring more peace on earth, more, not all yet. Because you see, life after life, they have enmity with each other, the human race and the animal race, you know, through killing, through abusive action, etc. So it's not like in one lifetime a master can use 
just spiritual power to, to give, to erase all that. The master is always willing to give. It's just not always allowed to give as much as he or she wants. Otherwise, peace would have been done quicker, easier. They call it peace power, but very difficult to explain to you this, okay? Very difficult. Because uh, you have to practice in order to know. If a master wants to use that, he or she can use in in appropriate manner. Just know how, but it's very difficult. Don't use that. Anyway, you, if you have to, I told you how already, yeah? <laughs> if you try, okay? Only you can know it, that you can or not. That's the ultimate, because this is the ultimate more than sacrifice of the body. Why? Because if you die as martyr, all will praise and worship you, or believe in you. But if you have this physical, sensual, act with the opposite sex, no one would ever understand it as a sacrifice. So, um, your reputation will be ruined, one. Your disciples will run away, two, etc., etc. Your followers will drop you like a hot potato. So you see this. This method is a no, 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 by all means, even by the adept. Actually, many masters also don't teach this. The Buddha also don't. Number one, it's very difficult and dangerous. Number two, people can abuse it. Some uh, a half-baked uh, teacher can always come up and say, oh, this method is good, I know how. I teach all of you. And then abuse it. And then slandering those who don't do it as well, because only half-baked or maybe a quarter-baked is <laughs> not cooked. That master is not well done. And he just use it because it's so convenient, it's so pleasurable, eh, easy to do. Easier than sit all day, meditate for many hours, eating one meal a day, wearing scanty, uh, very simple clothes, living in a simple area. And then many of the vulnerable followers and believers would fall into this kind of trap, thus harming themselves. Harming themselves because they will think this is the way and the Master is perfect. The Master can do it. They lead you to liberation through that. And they are falling. And they have no chance to find a true method. So many Masters don't allow this, so it's just a taboo. No, no, no. Some master know this, but it's taboo and it's easier just to say no. <laughs> so no more question, <laughs> no more trespassing, the, the limit. Not to talk about the master himself would ever do that for the above mentioned reason. But that is not all. That is not all harmful about this method. More to come, if I have time. Oh, I will explain to you. That is the note. I have to see which one next. Eh? The more harmful effect is spiritual. Okay? Every time you have sex with your opposite or same sex, and if you do not control, I mean, the control only you know, it may look the same, like the normal, actions, but the things you control. But if it's a sacrifice, then you cannot control. You have to let it be like normal couple. But every time you do that, it will take you five weeks minimum to recover your diluted power. Did you hear that? Every time, five weeks long to recover whatever you had before, because it's diluted your power. Don't think it's a small thing. For example, if a master have a power to save two people from some accident, for example, okay, save their lives, 
unless it is their time to go. The master can save both of them with a very minimal injury. But if that master has sex with somebody during that time, just before that, is still within five weeks, then he, she can save only one. That's why many master monks and nuns tell you to break it, okay? <laughs> Stop it. Try to train yourself not to indulge in these activities. You cannot control, okay? That's why, you see, how many people practice even Guan Yin method? How many people get up to fifth level? Last time I told you, how many? Tell me. If you remember? 1,200 around. Something, yeah. Even if it's 100,000, compared to the world billions, how much is that? Not even a zero, 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 zero percent. Huh? Because it's all dissipated through these activities, sexual activities. Monks and nuns, they know better. Okay? And that's why I told you also protect them. Don't go too near them. Don't try. Don't try to contaminate them. Okay? Help them what you can, but unconditionally only, huh? Don't try to go too near, get the blessing, or, or try to even to take them home or <laughs> stuff like that. I'm telling you, this world is a big trap, very difficult to get out. When I left you on the 1st October night, after leaving everyone, even the dinner with the guests, I went to a, a small house over there to talk to the SMTV from outside, from other country, talk to them. And nobody f remembered to record. <laughs> At last I used my iPhone <laughs> to record, but only some jokes remain. The rest of the talk is gone. <laughs> First of all, it's gone because we didn't record. Second, because no more battery. We use three iPhones no battery enough to record everything. But I tell you, one of the sister, your sister from America, she's American, she was crying because something happened in her life. And also in general, she says, not fair. Because we were talking about the Maya who trick and trap people. And she says, not fair that the Maya did all that and then make us fall into the trap and then punish us. I say, of course it's not fair. That's why I wanted to take you out. Just going out, that's it. There's no use of arguing to this guy. He lies, he cheats. Like you're breathing. He has no moral bar. No, no standard of what we call virtue. The best is that, just go out. Go out of this realm. So I said, now I show you how to go out already. So all you do is just eat, sleep, or work, and going. <laughs> going out, yeah, until you're gone. That's all you do right now. Hmm? If you have to work, you work. Otherwise, you just eat, sleep, meaning meditate, yeah, <laughs> and then going <laughs> out until you're out. That's all you have to do right now. There's nothing else you should think of to do with your life. Sleep, eat, do what you have to, and going. Keep going, going. So now you know all the secret. Oh, well, not all, but some. Actually, I had to do retreat to <laughs> check out on all this. Because if I'm busy, too busy every day. I also meditate every day, of course. But not long enough to go deeper into a higher archives to dig out some of the information, like this one, for example. Not even the tantric master knew this, okay? Only you, no, don't tell anybody else <laughs> secret, okay? Only between us. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> How can I keep any secret anymore <laughs> from you or from anybody? So, uh, of this very terrible, Anything you say enjoyable in this world, it comes with a price. Five weeks long, 
That is if you don't do any more of this sexual activity during five weeks. Otherwise, you, you even sink further, sinking, sinking, sinking. Can never make up for it. So, many power that you acquire through meditation, through master blessing, through heaven's protective uh, grace, going, going, going down the drain. Do you understand why many masters don't do this sacrifice? Yes. For peace even. Cannot use it, peace power for peace even. It costs too much, and the master might not be able to regain it. Actually, sex is another gift from God, but mostly uh, humanities abuse it for different lowly purposes. So you see, animals, most animals, they don't always have intercourse, no? Only season. And then when they have babies, they take care of baby only, and until next season, when their baby is already grown up and independent. You know that, right? If not, no, search on internet. In heaven, it's labeled as peace power. Okay, I told you already <laughs> before I, I read this. The power that can bring peace to individual or larger body of beings is if someone knows how to use it, okay? I don't want to elaborate here now, for rarely anyone can master and or practice for that reason, for that goal, but rather could be misused again and could be also overwhelmed by it, because it's very powerful, you understand? Very powerful. It creates humanities and the whole animal kingdoms and plant kingdoms on the whole planet here. Whatever you see on this planet came from this power. That's how powerful it is. The power of the Creator. So we could create peace and we could create disaster even. It's not the release of this powerful urge that make any being feel peace or contentment after sexual act, but it is the undivided attention that brings about this result. But because it's short-lived nature, most humans take it for granted and crave it again and again as convenience or mood lead them. So we have long lost our mind power and willpower to control and direct this peace power to a noble application. You see, when you are having a sexual act with your partner, you concentrate on that so much. That's why afterward you feel contentment. It's just like any concentration when you do meditation. But this is a short-lived thing. You see light, sometimes even, if both are very loving and caring. You can feel the earth moving. You can see the light even. But short, of course. Afterward, nothing more. Not like Kuan method. You can always have it without having to exercise too hard. And it's always there for you. If no light, at least the sound, 24-7. Even when you're unconscious for any reason even when you are clinically dead, you still have that surrounding you, within you, without you. That's a very secure, guaranteed method of enlightenment and liberation. This um, theme I've been explaining for two, three times, because this is the most misunderstood, the most abused you know, element in our human life. So I hope now it's all clear to you why in our practice I advise you to tap her off, <laughs> slow down, okay, control. Now you got it? Yes. Mm. Otherwise you lose too much. You lose too much power. It's a pity. And you can only keep your head above water. And that's a pity because you could go higher seeing bigger things, learning better wisdom, then you have to even take in it from me. Okay? 
and you can help the world, you can help many people, whomever you want to help. I mean directly, consciously even, huh? or unconsciously. That is why life after life, many master comes and go, and many people practice different method, but we are still somewhere <laughs> here. <laughs> Very rare do people come up high, except for the grace of the master. Very difficult for you, even practicing Guan Yin method, to go up anywhere. I'm telling you this, so you can avoid the trap. Just practice Guan Yin method, which connects you to your own self-nature. No harm comes out of it, no side effect, because it's you. And also if you adhere to master the master instructions and follow through those easy steps, and even children from six years old can get enlightenment, implement it, and get enlightenment and liberation already, even if they die at a young age. They've gone high and are liberated. This is uh, not continue with that. This is something to do with pets. Okay, I tell you anyway. Okay, even though it's not in the in the subject, pets, you know. The animals that you welcome into your house and treat them like your own family members, they are your benefactors. No matter if that animals are born because of their previous karma or they are born willingly to come down to this planet to help you or their ex-family members and friends. Sometimes your family members gone to heaven, and then when they see you having trouble down here, or having dangers somewhere along the journey, they will come down as animals to help you, to protect you, to heal you, to teach you silently. My dogs are very noisy, there is nothing silent about them. <laughs> Just your dogs are more silent. If I don't listen, they go pee and poo right in front of the house, in the middle, or on my in front of my uh, mat, in the middle of it, so that I cannot avoid uh, their conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Mostly they meant well, they didn't mean to soy, because they are very, very good. They are very clean and they are very intelligent. They just do that only when this is like a desperate measure to talk to me, to warn me, and they saved my life so many times, truly like that and still did a couple of days ago. Otherwise, I wouldn't be sitting here talking to you. Just like a hair different between my life and my demise. Just that difference, few seconds, and it's avoided. I checked and it was all true, not like they made up the story. What for they made up that kind of story? He kept telling me things a few days ago. Oh, that girl come crying to me. The girl, sometimes she keep warning me, and she came crying to me in, in the middle of the night when I sit, meditate. I normally never did. What for just come crying like that? So I asked her, what is it? What's wrong? Are you in pain or in trouble? Don't think that I always know everything. When I'm in meditation, I know something else. I don't always know about my dogs or your thinking. I have different department to, to work on. So she came crying, and then I asked her, what is it? She said to me, because Maya told her, and then she was crying, crying, she couldn't finish. I said, tell me, what did the Maya bother you with? She said to me that uh, Maya told her not to keep telling me all the secret, like warning me, stuff like that, otherwise I would die. And I misunderstood, because uh, she said, otherwise you will die. I thought the Maya told her that then you will die, you know, meaning the dog. So I thought, no, you cannot die, don't worry. I am here. So I hug her and caress her and hold her and sing for her. I say, we are here. Nobody can touch you, okay, unless it's your time to go. Don't worry about it. And don't take my karma. If you, if you don't want to, don't tell me anymore. Don't tell me anything. I take care of myself. 
And then she said, no, it's not her who will die, it's me who died. That's why she come crying. She was checking whether I'm still alive. <laughs> crying, crying like that. Yeah. I said, Maya told you not to tell me anything and you still told me. <laughs> and she was crying her heart out. The dogs, they cry different. They don't, whoa, 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 no, they cry. Cry with real tears also. <laughs> like that, just like a child crying, yeah. So that was that. And then I had to use some, some power to calm her and then to, to talk to her and say, it's going to be okay. And then I had to have her immediately after she went out and had to come back again. Normally they take turns, there are two groups, white group and black group. <laughs> So that day I have to continue having, you know, whatever group that was. But then I will continue to have that group just to comfort her. She was heartbroken. She was so worried, so worried, worried. They all worry, but she is the most expressive of all. When you have pets, they, uh, they can bless you, make you feel better when you're sad. And when you're sick, they heal you quicker. You heal quicker. Uh, even big sickness becomes smaller or avoidable altogether. That's well known. Many doctors know that. Many people know that. And when you love that pet because of the concentration of love between you and you take care of the dogs, for example, or the cats or the birds, and you concentrate all on love then, so you're more oblivious to whatever the turbulence outside on the planet or other people. That's why you avoid many sickness. Is that logical to you? Yes. Because the, the goddess of love told me one time, remember I told you, she said that love has the component to cure all ills, the component. But because we don't always have this kind of love, the unconditional love, the pure love, that's why we have a lot of trouble, okay? We think we love a wife, a husband, but it's not enough. Even parents love children, sometimes not enough. If you really have true, pure love, you will hardly get any sickness or any trouble. But not because we don't want to love, but we are distracted. <laughs> we are pulled in, pulled out, pushed, torn, because of the situation of this life. Sometimes you just want to concentrate to uh, carry your dog and love him and then something else come. Uh, the phone rang and or the neighbor come or sister call or mother or uh, friends or any other distraction, yeah? Or your trouble, your tax man coming, your car broke down, whatever. Just distraction all the time. So it's difficult for us to concentrate on this pure love alone, unconditional and pure. Otherwise, humans would never know sickness. We never know trouble, never know discontentment, ever. Animals are here, actually, to help us, to remind us of this pure love. But we're too busy. Even if we have pets, we don't always pay attention to them. I also not. I have work to do. But I love to hug them and talk to them, and because that time feels so good, so peaceful. But then I have to tear myself apart because work's calling, physical work and inside work as well. So everyone, we are really cheated on this planet of all kind of uh, equipment, all kind of instrument to give us true happiness, peace, contentment, because we have to work. This will make us work. If we don't work, we can't live. That's why we are deprived of so many source, so many ways to find love, to find peace, to find happiness. We just too much concentrate outside. Some more, some less, of course. That's why animals are really our friends. At that time when you concentrate on love, even uh, love your partner, your children, when it's pure, unconditional, then you are immune to all kind of karmic effect surrounding you. And also you will be disconnected <laughs> with all the trouble of the world 
and of your own trouble also. You're disconnected at that time because you concentrate on love. That is why having pets or having someone you love dearly helps you a lot. Okay, pets are easier to love than humans. No matter whom you love, humans are more complicated in nature, have dual nature. Dog, cat, pet, they have only one nature. That is love, uncomplicated, unconditional. Therefore, having pets helps a lot of people to avoid sickness or to minimize sickness or to heal sickness easily. That is the thing I have written about dogs, about pets. Even some comment effect coming towards you, you're too concentrated on, on love. I also cannot reach you, cannot touch you, because it's all from the power of undiluted attention, undivided attention and love combined. In India they call that uh, bhakti yoga, if you will, devotion. Devotion to something, to the master, to God, or even devoted to your wife, your husband, but has to be truly devoted. It's more difficult to devote your love to humans than to pets. Because even if you want to devote your love to humans, they have their own up and down, yeah? They have their own mood, their own complication of nature. Very difficult to always uh, follow them, follow their mood. But pet is easier to love because they just love you all the time, 24-7. They are never tired. Midday when you want to come and love them, midnight or anytime, weekend, holiday, you can love them. They always welcome and love you back. They love you even before you show your affection anyway. So it's very easy to love them. They don't play game. They love you, just pure. Human, you have to sometimes accompany them, their mood, their personality, their likes and dislikes and all that. Uh, it's more complicated. <laughs> you still want story or you have any question concerning anything? Concerning what I just told you? If you have sex and you have an orgasm, you lose five weeks. No, you don't lose five weeks. You need five weeks to recover what you have lost. The spiritual power. So what if you don't have an orgasm? Does it still take that long? Then it's better. H how much better? Then it's as if you don't do it. Oh. That's why I taught you a few weeks ago. Control the, the end. Thank you. You can still do it to satisfy your mind, with your, satisfy your partner, but you don't have to go to the end. You don't have to uh, climax, that's what I say, right? Then as if you don't do anything, even beneficial to you, because you brought up all this concentration power, up, not down. When you uh, finish, it's all coming out. Also physical body wellness also coming out. That's why you feel maybe empty afterwards, tired, and sleep. <laughs> it's very well known that men sleep immediately. <laughs> And women feel very frustrated. <laughs> yeah. The reason the women feel frustrated because they are more sentimental. They don't concentrate only on this act, but concentrate more on love. But men, they cannot help it. They're just so exhausted afterward, empty. Empty here, empty everywhere. And woman, if she also comes to the end and she also feel exhausted, like that. But if both do not finish, then the love will grow even more. The peace will be even more. And it affects also peaceful environment. That is a tantric method for using that for people who cannot avoid the couple's actions but still retain the spiritual height and not lose anything. Then you don't need any five weeks at all. Even you can see the light during or after. You can feel the earth moving during or after. And you feel very peaceful. I mean, maybe immediately after that you still feel like you're not done, but then just a, a few seconds and then you feel very peaceful, very contented and very beneficial 
to health and mental and spiritual as well. Many women, they don't have this sexual satisfaction as men. Men is easier, okay? No matter what, they will satisfy themselves. Women, not that easy. I have suspected that maybe that's why so many women come here, because they're happier, they're more contented, they're not so exhausted and not so blurred and trapped like men. You see so many women compared to men, maybe because of the dissatisfaction in a couple's life physically. But that little dissatisfaction Give them more boost to grow love, love toward their husband, love toward others. Just the love will grow more with that, not like diminished with the finishing line. When you reach the finishing line but you don't cross, then you have more than if you cross. If you feel completely done with the sexual act, you don't feel as good as as if you control it. When you hit the, the hate of that sexual desire, you stop. You don't waste your energy and your physical fluid and all kind of things that go with it. So that will help you even more. You won't lose anything. That's why they practice so-called tantric. Tantric is like that. For the couple to control their own uh, sexual peak, don't lose the physical and mental and spiritual power. If you finish, you lose, then you must wait five weeks in order to replenish, recover what you lost, the dilution of your power, spiritual, mental, physical, emotional, psychological, psychic. That's why humans keep losing, 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 uh, telepathy power, psychic power, emotional power, love power, get less and less because too much indulgence. And nowadays even worse because they advertise for it. It's all in the open now. Children even have to be exposed to all this in the wrong way. Hmm? So if you woman wives feel your husband is lousy, <laughs> too fast, too quick, be happy, okay? He is the one who lost, not you. <laughs> he is the one who lose. You, more powerful, okay? More strong, more loving. Maybe that's why God entrusted women with motherhood, the sacred duty of motherhood, okay? Don't feel sad. If in bed you're not very satisfied or happy, don't be sad, be happy. Okay? Be happy. Feel lucky that you don't waste too much of your power, whatever kind. Congratulations! <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why you're wiser. You come more to group meditation, you come more to see me, you meditate more, you do more things that is beneficial to others, because you're happy, because you're full of power inside that not wasted, and then you use it for many things, even for cooking, cleaning the house, you do a lot of things and you're not as quickly exhausted as a man. So if you think your husband is lousy in bed, thank him. Thank you for being so lousy, thank you. <laughs> Don't ask him too much anymore. He's already losing too much. Any more question? Uh, 师父, 我想请问, 有关刚刚说的 pets, 就是他们会不会承担我们的业障? 会. 是. 会。有一些。果然。他能承担多少,他就帮你承担。其实,有时候替你而死的。他们不在意。因为他们也知道死不是 
这圣的复杂，不是自己错，就是圣出来，就是有很多复杂的器官，因为很多复杂，所以我们才比较聪明，才能够发明这个那个，做这个那个啊，比动物比较能干。不过他们的灵性比我们高，他们随时比较跟跟高级的力量比较沟通，他们有灵性啊，就知道过去未来多。我们很小，很小，然后越来越忘记了啊。不过我们对他们好的话，他们非常感激的，然后他们就把自己最好的贡献出来。你自己本人不会知道，有时候可以观察得到，不过很小知道。多数动物他们把他这些的才华跟自己灵灵秀的程度都强起来，不给人家知道，怕人家利用。他们会承担我们的一些业障，嗯，也有啦，不过不一定随时都有。如果我们爱他们呢，全身爱他们，一是那个爱的那个力量也会保护我们的。你爱他，不过你自己这个力量会保护你的，懂不懂？然后他爱你，当然互相会保护。嗯，他不一定随时都要承担你的业障，也会帮忙，因为这个爱的关系。他太爱我们了，我们就没有办法不爱他。就是这样子的，互相爱，嗯，就会，呃，有很多帮助啊，啊 ，OK， 嗯，还有吗？哎，不客气 ，Yes， Thank you, Master, being with us. Thank you for your um dog protecting you and warning you. Uh, otherwise, I don't know what what will happen. The note, you mean? Yes, a loving yes, note. note. Yes, oh, loving. Okay, okay. Two days ago, the crying dog um, warning you, and you know, the Maya, he tries to harm you. Yeah. So I want to, for behalf of our association members, you know, all human beings, thank you for your dog and loving, and caring, protection. Yeah. All of your pets have magical power. You must remember that, and they help you any time they can. Even if you're not with them, but you love them, you're connected. And whatever they can do to protect you, they will lay down their life for it. Not just my dogs. Of course, my dog. I think they're special. They came specially to help to protect me because they know I'm always alone, mostly alone. Of course, when I'm with. One or two people is different, but I live alone, so they know I need some love and protection. I thank them every day. <laughs> I thank them at least before they sleep. But whenever we're together, you know, when I remember, when I'm not too busy working, I always thank them. I say thank you for your love, for your trust, for your protection. And they're so happy, happy <laughs> when I say that. They look at me and kiss me. <laughs> they know the difference. Yes, they know that very well. All they want is that you love them and appreciate their presence and their love. That's all they want. Whether or not you give them a lot of food or good food or bad food, they don't mind. They don't care. Yes. I am very grateful to heavens. They're sending me my dogs, even though I did not want them to come down. I could tell them, "Don't come back again." <laughs> And they're sneaking in. Somehow we meet. That's a problem. Mm. But they are not normal dogs, you know. Most animals, if you love them, care for them, they will use their power, their inherent power, to protect you. They go to the end of the world to protect you. They die for you if they can. So love your pets, okay? Salam, Mustad. Hello. Yes. I'm Persian, but cannot very really good speak English. Not good English. English. Yes, I question. Uh, Are you wrote it? Yes. Oh, what is it? Uh huh. What is the difference between Western and Eastern heaven? Is the Eastern heaven higher in terms of level than Western heaven? Oh, there is no Eastern or Western. Uh, in in Buddhism, we have uh, one place called Western Paradise. It's because Amitabha Buddha resides in the West. Yeah, and other Buddha reside maybe in the South, the South of the 
hemisphere compared to our planet. So we say west and east, but they're all the same. If it's heaven, of course there's different degree of heaven, it's not all the same. It's different in degree of spiritual consciousness, but not different because it's the western, because their nose is higher or taller, it's not like that. We are human, same. If you do bad thing, you go to whatever hell. If you're good and virtuous, you go to whatever heaven, depends on your spiritual consciousness. You, you might go to heaven, but there's no differentiate between the Westerners and the Asian in terms of heaven. Thank you. Welcome. Very nice to see you. Yeah, very rare. Come here, have a hug if you want. Your people suffer so much. Come here. Let me take it from you. <laughs> you look beautiful. Allah bless you. Allah bless you. Allah remember you. Why don't you take this and then give it to your family slowly and any other initiate that you know, okay? I love you so much. Thanks for coming. <laughs> love you. Okay? Be good. Allah loves you. This is all for you, for your clan members. Big clan. So and maybe more later. Thank you. Thank more you. Iranian disciples. Thank mm? you. Okay. Thank you. Master. You're welcome. All the Westerners come here because a long way. The black, the white. Come here. Be free. Come. <laughs> Slowly. Okay. Welcome. Spanish. Hola. ¿Cómo está? ¿Cómo está? Muy bien. Muy bien. ¿Todo va bien? Sister? Sister. Sister. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. The whole Spanish people? <laughs> Bienvenido. <laughs> De nada. Spanish also? <laughs> ¿Dónde es? Madrid. Madrid. ¿Todo va a Madrid? ¿De Madrid? Andalucía. ¿Ah? Andalucía. Oh, Andalucía también. Ok. Bienvenido. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Bella. Bella. Thank you. Bella. Muchas gracias. De nada. Mucho de nada. Atención. How are you? <laughs> Finally see you, huh? Only on TV normally. Okay. Fabiane? Thank you. Good luck. And you, where from? Canada. You see, good here. I saw you often. You stay in Taiwan. You do stay here. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, very good. Of course. Ah, uh, uh, you also stay in Taiwan. <laughs> Any more question? Yes. 师父好。感恩师父为所有的徒弟和全世界所有的人所有动物所做的所有的一切牺牲付出努力 okay. 呃, 也感应到师父在冬天的夜里给他盖被子，他感觉全身都很温暖，等等等等，很多。嗯，不过呢，他往生的时候那几天是特别痛苦的，所以呃，我我不知道他他到哪里了。我想请师父看一看他现在还好
，那个业障很清干净就才能走嘛，因为定业嘛，哎，定业不能改那么多，没关系啦 o、OK、k 是，我就特别心疼他，他临终那一周受了太多的痛苦啊，不会的，他他自己不会觉得哭，主要就是他解脱嘛 ，OK， 好，嗯，好。好，甘师傅。任何发生事情，也就是我幻想啦。OK， 耶。我是，我也把呃，他做别的，拿别的，他们都是他们别别讲。Anybody translate person? No. No, I write it. Are you write it down? Give it to me. Read it. Read it. Two years before initiation, I used to meditate. I had an experience. I was in Abraham's temple in Jerusalem. Between many masters, such as Abraham, Prophet Muhammad, Musa, Prophet Jesus,、mm. I could see everyone's except Abraham's face.、Mm. I felt like I was a woman. I was crying from happiness. Jesus, Jesus asked me, "Why are you crying so much?" And then another experience I had with Jesus was that we we were in a really long cave that was full of light. There was a sound of river nearby in the cave.、Mm. I was really happy until Jesus left. Good, good. So you can see the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and Jesus. They are friends. <laughs> you, you are Muhammadan, huh? Muslim, right? Ah,、uh, yes. Yeah, and you see Jesus and Abraham and Moses, even yeah? yeah, just to prove to you that. All great masters, they work in in the same benevolent way for humankind. Okay. Right. Thank、yeah. you. Right. Thank you. Yeah, many people like that. The Buddhist saw Jesus, the Christian saw Buddha, <laughs> <laughs> just to 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 break their concepts of religious difference. All right. Very good. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. 请问师傅，师傅，你刚刚有提到那个夫妻关系哈，是来自于天堂和平的力量。那那个天堂是在哪一个天堂？是在第几届的天堂？看你们啊，那天堂就是从上到下嘛，你在哪里，就它就是那里的天堂啊。OK， 在哪个等级啊？嗯，不同。最少就是第三届了，因为那只是教化的那种力量啊。OK。也可以修行，用这种办法。不过没有观音法门这么好，观音法门是最好的。所有名师都强调这个。佛他知道多少法门，他还是说观音法门好的。OK， 别的名师他不讲别的法门，他就讲观音就好了。因为讲太多，徒弟又分心了、啊，然后这边也要碰碰看，那边也要摸摸看，要分心了、啊。所以最好修观音法门，一个就够了。这个最好的。啊、uh, ，Master， can you explain more about the spiritual power we practice for spiritually? But that's a kind of ultimate fear become manifest a power or whatever because I don't understand. What what kind of power do you need? Uh, I just curious about the spiritual power because last time in the Christmas retreat. You explain the Sran Gama Sutra. Okay,、yeah. okay, understand. Yeah, yeah. That spiritual power is not the highest spiritual power. Okay, maybe the Buddha did not、uh, explain in the modern term. Yeah, so anybody who practice will get spiritual power, but it's different level. Maybe low spiritual power that he wants, meaning maybe he want Santong lah. He want magical power. And at that time, they also say it's spiritual power. Of course, because it's not material power, so the Buddha maybe term it all in spiritual power. But actually, the Buddha means those lower power, even spiritual power, but lower. Like you want to see the heaven, you want to see the hell, you want to have some magical power. These are not ultimate power. They are not liberating power. Okay. I don't want、uh, magical power. No, but, better not. But that time, Master、uh, once mentioned, say,、uh, like,、uh, rather than lose one thousand lifetime human body, but never lose、uh, spiritual power. Otherwise, you won't recognize、oh, the different, living different, Master. Different, different power. Yes, maybe the translation, 
Buddha speaks in an ancient language, okay? And the translator just says spiritual power. Because when you read on, you know that the Buddha don't mean the highest spiritual power. He means those lower ones, you know, still have desire, something like that, or magical power, or the power to go to heaven and earth as will, some stuff like that. Some people call that spiritual power. What I mean is your original spiritual power that never lose. And when you practice, you unveil some of that more, okay? It's like you have Buddha nature, but you, you don't know much. So slowly, slowly you discover more and more. It's like your house is new. It's your house, but you forget. You have too many rooms. One day you go this room, next day you go next room to see what you have. They say that the Queen of England has so much treasure that she doesn't even know <laughs> all that she has. What for she need to know all of them anyway? We don't need all that. But if we need, we can use automatically. The more we meditate in the Quanning Method, the more power we rediscover from ourselves. And then we can use it automatically. Because if you really know how to use it, your ego will come out and the maya will make trouble. Shufa,我那个看耶稣基督的那个上帝之子的那个电影啊,反复的看了五六遍,然后我经常就是Shufa,这一世为世人地球啊,做的太多太多了,比耶稣那一世还付出的很多很多,Shufa太感动了。师父我和师父我和师父修行二十多年了二十多年我感恩师父没有师父恩典我我真的是太太太微小太微小了我跟师父越修行我就感觉自己好像里面的力量很伟大用里面力量用爱的那个力量我就感觉自己好像很幸福
a threat, or did he act on it later? And how come, if a master is not allowed to be killed in this time period, why is master's life endangered、well, so often? So often, but not killed. Hmm. I'm still here. It's not fair, master. Don't worry. Yes, Maya is like that. He just lie. I tell my dog, he lie. Don't worry. <laughs> he lies. Don't worry. Anything happen to me because I allow it to happen. If I don't allow, it won't happen. Okay. It's all my fault. No Maya can do anything to me at all. Okay. If I allow things to happen because it's good for the world or good for the disciples, but if、uh, if my life is not、uh, destined to be、uh, cut short yet, then I'm okay. I'm still here, nah. So I told my dog, "Don't worry, I'm still here." So I teach them how not to worry. I told them we are very powerful. Don't worry about.、It. And she's okay. She went to sleep right away afterward. <laughs> Don't worry. Maya is a troublemaker. Always, he try. He cannot threaten me. He threaten my dog. I scold him so much. I say, "You are so stupid and cheap. Why don't you take on somebody like your size?" <laughs> and you harass my dog. What for? I, I say, "I despise you so much. Leave my dogs alone, or I will destroy you." I told him. I was so angry. I say, if you touch my dog, I will destroy you, and you will never ever exist again. And then he went away with his tail <laughs> between his legs. I mean, the Maya. I was so angry that he harassed my dog. I was screaming at Maya. I was so angry. I was really, really angry. I said, don't touch my dog. Don't bother my dogs. Otherwise, I will really destroy you. No matter what. Reason or excuse? I was really mad, and when I'm mad, I'm really mad. <laughs> If you saw me two nights ago, you you will know. Oh, she's really mad, really angry. True. Don't worry, I'm here. <laughs> Master. I'm just telling you things that happen, but you don't have to worry. Okay. Just to tell you things like I tell you the story of Lord Mahavira, for example. Sometimes I tell you things that happen in my life, but not to worry, okay? I'm tough, big girl.、Hmm. Look at me, I'm tough, no? <laughs> <laughs> Truly, I'm very tough. I don't know if any woman tougher than I am. Working so much and okay.、Uh, The doctor give me a lot of medicine and、uh, vitamin and all that. I just realized today that I never took them because I forgot. <laughs> no time, you know. <laughs> and I'm still okay, so I don't worry about it. Yeah, getting better all the time. More strong, more powerful. That's why I can avoid so many attempts on my life. Not because.、Uh, I know, and I try to avoid、uh, that I can or not, but because I'm powerful, that's why I can avoid. If I'm not powerful enough, no matter what, they will, they will bring me down, but they can't. It's not because I I know and I can escape, but they, they just can't. Okay, that was just an excuse only. I go when I want to go.、Hmm? I live when I want to live. Nobody can do anything, and from now on, when I'm on retreat, I told all of the stupid magicians, I say, whatever you send to me from now on, I will return it to you, and you will take your own medicine because I won't take it anymore. I don't want to. I won't harm them. I just return the gift. That's it. Very simple, and then you will know what it's like. I will just return the gift. So I keep telling them, don't try, <laughs> don't try any more, because you will be in trouble. You'll be in more trouble than you asked for. Before I used to take it, but now I don't take no more. I return, hundred percent. 
If somebody gives you something, you don't want to take it, then you return, right? Very simple. So that's what I told them. During my last retreat, three weeks, I make all of them know very loud and clear that the time is up now, you guys behave. Because if you try to sense some, some bad thing, no matter what kind of magic, you will have it back, full, complete. <laughs> but still, somebody still wants to try, nothing happened. They just get more frustration and trouble. They will be sick, they will be ill the whole life and nothing can cure them, so that they will not harm others. I will just dismantle their power, that's all. I don't do anything harm to them, I just disable them. All their magical power will be gone, so just don't touch me, I told them that. All your power will be gone, strip, zero, and then you will be sick all your life no able to harm any other people or animals or any kind of beings. That's what I told them. And I tell them then now, all of you hear it also and be my witness, okay? So don't worry about me. Whatever I don't allow, it won't happen. And if I do allow, then it's for your good. I'm here just for the good of others. Uh, yesterday, uh, some of your brother don't send me some uh, SMTV work for me to work because they say it's too late. Let me rest. I say, what? <laughs> I never rest. If you don't send, I, I will be even more restless because I don't know why, what's going on. I do all the time, I work all the time. There's no time to rest except when I meditate. Don't worry so much. I say, don't worry about me, I'm here to work. You know, we work together. If you don't rest, I don't rest. If you work, I work. So no worry too much about me. I hardly ever sleep until two, three, four, five o'clock in the morning anyway. So eight or nine o'clock in the evening, that's is my tea time. <laughs> if I ever drink tea. <laughs> yeah, don't worry so much. I'm tough, really. I want to be a rock that you can lean on. Okay? So don't worry, I'm fine, really. Very happy, very strong. But that doesn't mean if somebody wants to throw a knife at me, and I just stand there and to prove it. No, I just, you know, step aside, that's all. But that doesn't mean anything, okay? If a tiger wants to bite you, don't be a hero, okay? Just try to run, <laughs> avoid it. Huh? Don't prove anything. No need. Uh, there's a song in, in the Lost Horizon film I like very much. Uh, it goes like, Mountains rise, mountains fall. You have nothing more to prove. You have climbed them all. Now you're here. May you stay and share the joy. I'm sorry, I don't have good voice. Well, it's free. <laughs> it's free anyway. We don't need to prove anything, okay? Take care of yourself, meditate, go home. Keep going. That's all we do now. Nothing else to do in this life. Keep going home until you reach it. Very simple life now. Whatever other we have to do is secondary. Our main purpose is just keep going until you go home. That's your life right now. If you don't want to go home, where else you want to go? Uh, 报告师父, 那个李师姐, 她请我报告师父, 因为她最近要去盘送粮食, 然后她要请我报告师父, 说她感谢师父, 这一次十月一号的活动, 师父在无形中跟有形中把所有的人类跟土地提升到非常高的境界他无法用言语去形容他说感谢师父谢谢师父跟他说不客气就功德诚信就会有福报嘛<笑> okay. 
师傅，因为就是在一周前，就是我生了算大病，然后本来因为要手术，可是就是很奇迹似的就康复了。那因为我在很疼痛的时候，我有呼唤您的名字，所以我想知道是不是您帮我承担？因为我听说就是这种疼痛是师傅要用肉体去。帮我们承担。那我想知道说，说这么多徒弟，难道师傅你每一个的病都要这样帮我们一一的承担吗？你怎么有办法去忍受？没关系，我身体不一样，铁弄的，嗯，<笑>铁金刚。可是师傅，我们不希望您在忙世界的事情的时候还要这样帮徒弟承担，那是不是不应该尽量不要去打扰你？就在不舒服。好，那你承担吧。所以在我要找了啊。啊，我是要还给你啊，<笑>没关系嘛 ，OK。当师傅是这样的 ，OK。谢谢师傅、哎。师傅能够，比方说一位名士，他能承担一百公斤啊，你就能承担，比方说一颗，啊，哎，他不一样嘛 ，OK， 他不一样，他有内在的那个力量撑腰啊 ，OK， 呀、yeah, ，他不一样，所以不要担心了啊。他很愿意 ，OK， 很愿意帮你们承担一些痛苦。他能做多少，他就会愿意的。就是有时候不能全部承担而已，因为规矩啦，啊，不然他他为你们而死，他也不会觉得怎么样。不客气啊，啊。如果不能忍受，就要求嘛 ，OK。反正我们做人的话，一定多多少少都要受苦，因为我们的业障啊，定业了，生生世世业障很多嘛。然后我们这次来的话，就一定会要承受一些了，不可能这样子空白来，然后空白去了啊。连我狗也是这样子啊。上次在开会的时候，我有讲过吗？他们有时候互相咬，我说你们不咬不行啊，他说不行，为他们从太单纯的地方下来，没有业障的话就不能留了，没有被受苦的话就不资格当我狗，所以才这样。他说真的为了为了资格啦，才才咬他，有一些啦，他咬多咬多有一些小，越单纯越被咬多。这个矛盾的，不过这个世界魔王的搞很乱这个样子。有一个故事我讲过嘛，有一个山羊啊，兢兢战战在在草皮吃草，然后狮子它来想吃它。那个那山羊说：“有有什么理由你要吃我呢？我没有惹到你，你为什么来这边要折磨，要要吃我？”啊，那个狮子说：“你你喝我的那个河流的水。”溪流的水，那个山羊说：“没有，我在这边吃草而已，根本没有经过那里，没有喝你的水，没有喝你的溪流的水。”那狮子就说：“你不喝的话，你爸爸一定也有喝过。如果你爸爸没有喝过，一定有你那个啊祖父祖母等等也会喝过。如果祖父祖母没有过，大大的那个祖父祖母一定祖宗都也。”喝挂我的气流，<笑>你懂吗？都不公平嘛，随便在讲什么就讲什么。这个世界是魔王是这样，就没法律啊，是他自己的法律而已。他的法律就是无聊，没有法律的法律。所以我才说带你们出去就好了，在这边跟他聊没有用啊，跟他讲什么道理啊，法律都没什么用啊，他不懂，我不想，不想懂。OK， 所以就跟那个嗯，那个强盗他要抢你东西，你在那边跟他理论有什么用呢？又等一下又挨打 ，OK 哈，最好就是出去了，离开这个世界。我现在走路了，一一边一边工作一边那回家了，就是讲我们生活现在都是回家而已，别的都没重要。OK， 如果你们觉得别的。比这个回家重要的话，那我帮不了了，啊 ，OK， 已经走路了，就是走了 ，OK， 有一些走慢，有一些走，有一些走快，看自己的那个体力了啊，不过还是要走了。
我们生活现在都是这样，要走了，回家了 ，OK。I say our life now is like that. Just going home. Nothing else important anymore. Okay, good. 想要感谢师傅，就是这一次可以让我们有十月一号这次服务的机会。然后贵宾们在饭店里面都很开心，他们都觉得就是在我们在旁边看的时候，就很像师傅说的朋友的聚会。对他们就会互相感谢，然后感谢师傅，也感谢我们工作人员。嗯，对，所以我觉得很很开心，感谢师傅。嗯嗯。我也感谢大家哈，合作，嗯，尽量合作，做得好，我没有忘记讲，做得好 ，good job， 开心了吗？啊，<笑>一直等我这样讲是吗？啊，<笑>我们能够服务别人是我们的荣幸啊，有福报，应该无条件贡献就没事了啊。那被服务的人会感觉无条件的，他会更高兴快乐。OK， 就这样嘛，简单了。啊，就是人很复杂嘛，想那么多。I thank you all of you, yeah. <laughs> Good job. Good night, baby. Have wonderful dreams. Heaven love you and I.